Whew. Samsung Unpacked, we have got a lot of stuff to talk about today. I am particularly confused slash frustrated slash annoyed with the Galaxy Fold, but that's gonna be most of this video. I'll just give you my brief thoughts on everything else. Starting, of course, with the Galaxy S10, S10+, Plus, S10e, and S10 5G. I think about 47 phones came out today. No, more like just five, but still. The S10 phones are fine. Uh, they're, they're fairly impressive. I like the reverse wireless charging with the watch and the Galaxy Buds when they work. They had some problems during the event and they couldn't get the watch to work correctly, but still. Well, let me try again. really simple so <laughs> just turn it on and you place Lock your device down. on the back of your phone boom Ultimately, they seem like good phones, good deals. Snapdragon 855s, okay. Camera holes, okay. Samsung's always known for being kind of the Swiss army knife of smartphones. They can do a lot. I guess I just wasn't too excited for them because there was legit like no surprises at all at this event. And it's not like an Apple event where we have a lot of leaks and we have a lot of concepts and 3D renderers out there predicting what the next iPhone's gonna be. And we have all these predictions that are probably gonna be fairly accurate about the next iPhone. This was different because I was watching the event live and articles and companies and youtubers were all posting their videos hands-on with the s10 s10 plus and s10e they were all uploading them before samsung even got to that part of the event by the time samsung was talking about it i was just browsing twitter reading articles going okay s10e 750 bucks s10's 900 bucks s10 plus is a thousand bucks okay got it Cool. So the event kind of felt redundant after that. There was just so many people were reporting on it. And then at the same time, the Samsung like aired a commercial for the S10 yesterday. So legit like no suspense, no interest at all to the point that I debated just turning off the keynote entirely because by the point I had read all the information I needed to, I was like, I don't need the live stream anymore. But that's not to critique the phones. I think it's an incredibly great deal that you can get all of this storage within the S10 by default. The displays look excellent from what people are saying about them. The ultrasonic fingerprint reader seems to be really fast and really reliable and secure. They're ditching the iris scanner and not mentioning it. I also find it bizarre that the forehead is still somewhat present on the S10 and it's a different size than the chin on the S10. So just everything about it just kind of bothers me from an asymmetrical standpoint. It's like you got the camera hole over here, the forehead's this big, the chin is this big. The prices did go up from the Galaxy S9 last year. These have increased quite a bit actually if you consider what they used to cost. Cost. But ultimately, you're still getting a ton with the phone. They do look very good and they're packing a ton of features. So I'm fine with the S10. Again, no real surprises, but not much to complain about from my end. S10e is quite a literal response to the iPhone XR, especially given matching that price point exactly. But at the same time, the compromises they made for the S10e, in my opinion, look completely justified. Having a fingerprint reader on the side does not look that fun. However, I don't think that would be very nice. But you're getting an OLED display, you're getting that camera hole cut out, and it's still IP68 water resistant, stereo speakers and all that. I think it's a perfectly decent phone. So no hate, not really much disappointment towards the Galaxy S10. It just met my expectations as to, okay, this is exactly what I thought it was gonna be. There are insane specifications you can configure the S10 to. I think the S10 Plus goes to a terabyte plus expandable storage. So you can get up to like 1.5 terabytes of storage in a phone, which is insane, but I'm having a hard time figuring out, I'm having a hard time figuring out how much that model is gonna cost. It's probably gonna be closer to like $1,700 or something insane like that. But yeah, you're paying for a lot, but you're getting a lot out of it. So I get it. It's fine. They also launched the Galaxy S10 5G, which is debatably out. I've seen a couple YouTubers film it, but they're not allowed to do much with it. They're not even allowed to turn the display on. So I believe that it is being worked on, but I think they're releasing it just a little bit too early. Maybe this would have been better to kind of launch more in the summer and not talk about it now because it clearly doesn't feel ready. But it's a 6.7 inch display. This phone is enormous. It has a huge battery. It's got four cameras on the back, but I don't understand what that fourth camera does. It's just depth sensing. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. Which was a bit of a disappointment to find out on the Galaxy S10 Plus. The reason that camera hole isn't bigger isn't because it's a dual camera like a lot of us wanted. It's really just a depth mapping 
lens, which I guess they wanted on the Plus models, but not the regular models. So personally, I think having a dual camera would have been more interesting and more applicable for people. But hey, you still got that triple camera on the back, lots of photography options, lots of video options, enhancements for color and lighting for video. I'm sure the cameras are going to be absolutely great. Also, I wasn't honestly that disappointed with some of their wearables. While a lot of the watch faces and a lot of the marketing they use for the Galaxy Watch Sport Edition look very Apple-esque, I still think they're pretty good deals. To find out that it could take your blood pressure and be $200 and have really good battery life, I'm impressed by that. I, I have no complaints. I don't think it's a great competitor to the Apple Watch, but if you're gonna make something to compete with the Apple Watch, making it look somewhat different and have different features than just trying to directly clone it and do it for literally half the price, I respect that. It's impressive that they can get the prices that low. The Galaxy Buds look interesting as well. I like that they're wireless charging and that they're only $130. They come in multiple colors. I absolutely despise the yellow one. That just looks weird, but that's just a personal preference thing. And they talked about how the microphones kind of use your inner ear to pick up your voice so that everything sounds crystal clear. I'm interested in testing that out myself, but yeah, in regards to the wearables, I think the new tech is neat. Seems interesting and I'd love to try it sometime. But now I think, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the end of the nice things I have to say about today. Everything felt incredibly standard and normal and we were getting good upgrades for fairly reasonable pricing and I didn't have much to complain about. But what I have most to complain about today is the Galaxy Fold. So yeah, Samsung is uh, breaking new records today in more ways than one with the Galaxy Fold. It's their first foldable smartphone that, uh, I, where, wow, where do I begin? It's two grand. This is a $2,000 product, ladies and gentlemen. Must I remind you that the smartphone market is in decline? There's less and less people upgrading their smartphones every year, and right in the middle of it, they want to release a phone that's legit twice the price of both a tablet and a phone. And please stop making the argument that it has the features of both, because it does not. Using this thing in folded up mode looks like you're holding a TV remote, and it has bezels thicker, I kid you not, thicker than the original iPhone. It looks like one of those Motorola phones from the 80s. Incredibly thick, incredibly chunky. Moto Moto likes this phone and I cannot cringe more at the way it looks when you unfold it. On top of that, Samsung consistently over the past couple years was mocking Apple for both removing the headphone jack and also for adopting a notch onto their phone while simultaneously they were designing this piece of crap that has a notch when you unfold it, a notch on a tablet. Can we all just take a second and realize that hasn't been done yet? Samsung just released the Tab S5e. Pretty good looking tablet. I have some issues with it, but it's fairly affordable and design wise, display wise, it looks pretty great. This thing has a notch, a giant corner notch, after they mocked Apple for having one, and my bigger problem with it is, why is the notch so big? I get it if you're gonna have a dual camera or something on the front, or, sorry, not a dual camera, one camera in a depth mapping lens, but shouldn't that only need to be as big as the camera hole on the Galaxy S10 Plus? I mean, it's not that intrusive. I get that it's a camera hole and it's asymmetrical, but why is the notch and the cutout so wide? What is all that extra space doing? They didn't really tell me. They kind of ignored it. They turn it off a lot in software and just say, oh, don't look at that. But we could clearly see it when they opened it. And I'm constantly asking myself, why are they releasing this? Are customers beta testers to you? This should be something in development. This is something they need to be experimenting with, not something they need to bring out on stage and say, hey, we'll take your money for two grand and then you can test this thing yourself. As they were holding the device unfolded in several different angles, I could see the crease because I have to remind everyone who's into foldables, remember, glass doesn't bend like that. In order to have a foldable display, it has to be made of plastic. Not to mention goodbye cases. Did you like having protective wear around your phone? Can't really do that as easily as you could have before. And most people who buy tablets typically buy some type of folio case or smart cover to prop it up. How are you going to do that with this thing? I guess you can't. You can't really prop it up or fold it up and type on it like you would a normal tablet. Most tablets that are sold these days are usually over the nine inch size. This thing has a display smaller than an iPad mini at an aspect ratio that almost no one has designed any of their apps for. So not only is it cutting out a big portion of the display, but this is a 7.3 inch display, okay? That is arguably a tablet given the iPad mini has a 7.9 inch display and the reason Apple hasn't refreshed the iPad 
iPad mini in so long is frankly because not that many people bought into it. This is not a large tablet display, which means that all of those multitasking features you want to advertise a tablet can do aren't really present here. As shown at the event, you can run like technically three apps at once, but two of them have to be unbearably small to the point that you could barely utilize them because once you open up the keyboard in your message bubble, it covers up the other app you have open. So if you're using an Android phone anyway, just use the chat bubble. Just tap on the person's face, text them back, and then close the chat bubble. It's that simple. Ignoring the fact that the screen is made of plastic, which means that it is incredibly more fragile than before, it can scratch up much quicker. I'm already starting to see creases on it when they're holding it in different light during the event. When closed, this thing has enormous bezels at a 4.7 inch design that looks unbearably uncomfortable to hold. I guess my whole problem with it is I don't understand how you can be excited for the changes with the Galaxy S10, but also think that the Galaxy Fold is okay. See, all that they really change between the S9 and the S10 is they're getting rid of that forehead, just that little bit of bezel so that they can replace it with a camera hole. But if we're supposed to be excited that a little bit of bezel is shrinking, how do you expect me to be excited that with this phone, you're making the bezels enormous, asking for twice the price of a smartphone, and then your main attraction to it is, well, it can turn into one of the smallest tablets we've seen in the past five years. And also, it's the first tablet to have a giant cutout at the top. Also, one of the most expensive starting prices for a tablet we've ever seen. No, I don't understand how I could be excited for both, and I'm sorry, just the simple argument of, but it folds isn't good enough for me. I've used hinges before, okay? I own a laptop. Advertising to me that a phone can do this is not reason enough for me to justify the incredibly high price tag, justify the horribly ugly bezels, justify the plastic screen, and also justify the fact that I don't think that many people are talking about the battery on this thing is really not that big. They have the tiny, tiny phone mode when this thing is folded up, but when unfolded, this thing is a 7.3 inch tablet. It has a 4,300 milliamp hour battery split from two different cells. And I'll remind you that in regards to tablets, that is a very small battery. Not to mention this thing is running Android. As we've seen in the past, most Android phones milliamp hour wise are much, much bigger than iPhones because they're Android chips and running that Android version of software typically isn't as good at efficiency. Android uses up a lot more battery, a lot more faster, particularly when there's a lot more RAM like this Galaxy Fold has. So that's going to eat up the battery very, very quickly. I'll remind you, the iPad mini 4 from years ago, that's $400 to this day, that has a larger milliamp hour battery than this thing, which costs two grand. And the ultimate reason I believe right now that Samsung has kind of killed the dream or the idea of foldable phones being a thing is I don't think this thing has a huge profit margin. I don't think that Samsung's trying to collect a bunch of money off of this. All of their other products are incredibly reasonably priced. The Galaxy Watch is $200. The Galaxy Buds are $130. Samsung's not a company that has a huge profit margin on their products, which means that I genuinely think all of the parts and all of the manufacturing just to make this foldable phone work do end up costing something close to $2,000. Meaning that no other competition is going to make anything close to this, I think, within the next couple years because they're going to realize no one is buying it. Not that many people are into this price point or this design. And my definition of overpriced is you can get this same experience or you can get even a better experience than this product for less money. And there could not be more examples to prove me right there. I'll give you one. iPhone 10R, 13 inch iPad Pro. Boom, already cheaper. I can carry a 6.1 inch display in my pocket with a face unlock sensor, mind you. The foldable phone, that has a fingerprint reader built into the power button, not the display like the new Galaxy S10. They couldn't figure that out. You have to go with old biometric, smaller screen versus the $1,000 iPad Pro with a 13 inch display, 120 hertz pro motion, and I'm still saving money opposed to that one purchase. Or let's say you don't care about Apple. Let's say you hate the liquid retina display. You hate the LCD display. You want AMOLED. You want Android, okay? That's your counter argument. Okay, then buy the Galaxy S10 Plus. Starts at $1,000 and get it with the Galaxy Tab S5e. That's a $1,400 purchase, and you're carrying a huge, amazing display in your pocket, and when you need a tablet, you pull out your $400 super thin Tab S5e, and you got a 10-inch tablet right there that you have much more space to work with, uniform bezels, and you don't have to worry about there being a big notch in the way. So even if you want to go the Android route or iOS route, there are options on both sides which are cheaper. Both of those options, mind you, I think would give you a better smartphone experience and a better tablet experience for 
much less money. I'm not saying that foldable phones can absolutely never work. I'm just saying that in order for foldable phones to become a thing or to become worth it to people, they have to be executed properly. This is the absolute worst way of doing that. You're immediately from the get-go showing people a thick, ugly phone that costs two grand, so most people are gonna throw it out of their mind already and say, no, I'm not interested in this. And if you're gonna call a product a two-in-one, it has to do what other products can do on their own. You have to make a phone that's just as good as the Galaxy S10 and make a tablet just as good as the Tab S5e and combine those together for a price point that is worth it to people so that if you're buying a two-in-one, for the most part, you can be saving money. I have my own problems with the Microsoft Surface line, but I usually think of the Surface Pro as my go-to, like, what is the definition of a two-in-one product? I get that it's not exactly a tablet, but let's just use it for the sake of the example. The Surface Pro 6 or whatever, okay? It's got the advantages of a tablet and the advantages of a laptop, two-in-one. A lot of people can justify that product because it's $900, and they can say, instead of spending $1,000 on a laptop and maybe $500, $600 on a tablet, I can kind of merge them together and get the best of both worlds when I buy this purchase. I don't think that two-in-one particularly does the best of both worlds, but for the most part, a lot of people buy that product that is a successful two-in-one. You can't make this same argument with the Galaxy Fold. It simply doesn't work. It's not a better tablet than basically any other tablet you can buy right now. The budget iPad is probably a better purchase. The Galaxy Tab S5e is a better purchase. Dare I say the Pixel Slate is a better purchase? No, I'm sorry. I won't, I won't go that far. But if you have to have a giant irregularity in your display, you have to have a tiny battery on a tiny display, because like I said, this thing is arguably a tablet given how small that screen really is compared to most tablets that come out right now, and then compare the phone side of it, which is a 4.7 inch display, giant bezels, really thick, giant bulge in your pocket if you try to carry that thing around with you. I'm sorry, no, this fails as a two-in-one, this fails as a phone, this fails as a tablet. I don't see any audience that would find any good use out of this other than, you know, YouTubers who are trying to mock it. Jerry Rig Everything, I'm sure we'll do some entertaining videos on it. I'm sure some other YouTubers may try it out, but they're definitely not gonna use it for more than 30 days. Then they're gonna put it away and go back to using a normal phone because none of the options with the Galaxy Fold, I think, can justify that price. What is their counter argument? That you can watch YouTube, text people, and search Google at the same time and because it can do that, it's somehow worth two grand? I'm sorry, no, the, the features do not equate to a $2,000 product, particularly given all of the compromise, compromise, compromise you have to make with it. It makes absolute no sense to me, it's mind boggling, and it amazes me that there are people on the internet that use their counter argument to my valid criticisms as, well, Drew, you're just jealous, or when Apple does this, you'd love it. Apple's not gonna do this. If Apple is going to release a foldable product, they're going to make sure that it's a decent two-in-one, that it'll be a good iPhone and a good iPad mixed together. And I can just tell you from the people who give us leaks from Apple, they're at least not doing this for another three years. And that's okay, because you know what? It's not ready right now. That's why this thing looks like absolute trash. I don't see the point in foldable phones. I don't see the use of it, but I'll happily be proven wrong. If someone can make something that price-wise and function-wise can be a great compromise in a two-in-one between phones and tablets, then I'll eat my own words and say, okay, that is a well-executed foldable. But right now, we're not there yet, the technology doesn't exist, and Samsung mocking other companies for making compromises with their phones so that they can go ahead and run their test devices on their customers for two grand a piece, I find completely annoying. I'm frustrated with it, I'm done talking about it. And ultimately, I want people to know that this is not coming from a hate towards Samsung because the majority of the stuff they announced today, I had very nice things to say about at the beginning of this video. It's really just the Galaxy Fold that I don't understand. I absolutely despise it, I don't want on it, and I think the release of that product makes Samsung by far the most hypocritical design company out there, as they mock companies for removing the headphone jack, having notches, and then do it themselves at double the price. Wow. Really, Samsung? You're gonna mock everyone for that? Wow. Anyway, let me know what you think of the Galaxy Fold. I'm sure this video is gonna get a lot of love down in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.